What is going on guys? Welcome to this Saturday's Q&A session where I answer some of your uh, common questions that you've posted in the comments in the recent videos that have been upvoted. So we're going to be looking at a couple of uh, fan-based questions and trying to answer, uh, you know, to the best of my knowledge. And uh, if you want to get your question answered, make sure to post it in the comments and uh, try to upvote the uh, most relevant questions. I will make sure to answer them on the next video's uh, Q&A. But let's just jump right into so it. So the first question was left by a user called Minega. He says, hello, how can you reduce the noise without an Arduino? Please, it's very important, thanks. Uh, so he's actually, he posted this question on the RF Links tutorial that I did quite a bit of time ago. And the problem there was that on the receiver side, you actually get uh, quite a bit of noise so the signal is bouncing up and down and uh, the obvious answer is, so if you want to reduce noise you want it to build a filter and in hardware what that really means is you need a uh, filter capacitor as well as a either a pull up or pull down resistor depending on your signal so uh, essentially you want to take a uh, value of 10 kilo ohms and put that on your signal and put a cut capacitor which would uh, kind of keep that stable and that would create a filter for your signal. The second question comes from the user called Carlos. Uh, he says, I would like to see detailed commenting in your code that would help to understand it better. Thank you for the video. Um, so the first the first uh, thought that comes to mind is I do post regular blog posts about each and every video that I put out. So if you go over to my website, which is eeenthusiast.com, you will find the latest uh, post about each tutorial, uh, which essentially covers the code in a greater detail. So you will see that I go and kind of paste uh, sections of code, either functions, you know, just uh, a block of code from the full software and explain what it does in greater detail. So I'll try and add more comments, but uh, to your point, I do kind of provide a bit more information on what, on my website. So if you want to uh, head on over there and get more information about a particular tutorial, uh, you are more than welcome to do so because it's just too difficult for me to re-edit the video and re-upload something onto YouTube. I can always add to my website, but YouTube is definitely a bit more challenging. Uh, so the next question comes from the user called Mihai Volkolescu. Uh, he says, where did you find the MPU 6050 product? Product specifications with complete chapter 4. Uh, the specs that you can normally find on Google have no chapter 4, which is uh, referring to the registers. Uh, so this was posted on my video about the accelerometer and the gyroscope MPU 6050. Um, and I do have to admit that that uh, data sheet was a bit more trickier than usual. So it had different sections. And I'll post the link down below where I actually found it. But essentially, it had uh, two different sections where the first, the main sheet was the data sheet itself without the register, and then you had to find an additional document which had the registers. Uh, refer to the link below, you can find it as well. Our next question comes from the user called Sarab Jiha. Sir, I am making a password enabled door locking and opening system, and I am using a servo, and I want that it should take a rotate after entering the password to 180 degrees and stops, and whenever the second pulse comes in, it should take a reverse action. So what I believe you're referring to is you essentially just want to uh, create your servo calls and make them either 180 or zero. So you're essentially uh, creating a solenoid out of your servo system. So my first kind of uh, suggestion would be if you're just using that for the locking, then you could probably go into a solenoid, which would have two binary states, so on or off. Um, but if you still want to go with a servo motor, then it's a very simple call of your function uh, to the motor. I'll post a link over here. Um, but essentially, if you go into the servo for the Arduino, you can make a call to make it uh, go to a position of zero or 180 degrees. And of course, you would need to tie in your input from your keypad, whatever you're using to enter the password on, uh, back to toggle your output for the servo. Um, but you can always send me more information as I can't be uh, very specific based on what you're describing. The there. last question I wanted to address actually came in as a uh, Facebook message to my Facebook account. And this person, uh, I'm not going to name the real name, but essentially they're asking, uh, you know, where did you learn uh, how to code on Arduino? And I wanted to uh, kind of discuss uh, a little bit on the conversation that I had with this individual, because I think it, uh, it will answer some of your questions as well. But essentially, um, I studied electrical engineering in university and I had a project or a class where I had to build 
a uh, system on microcontrollers. So we've built sumo bots, we've built, uh, you know, range detectors, had to build um, any like simple LED like button stuff. And that was back in like C and assembly. Uh, so essentially I learned, uh, I didn't learn Arduino directly in school, but I learned how to program microcontrollers in C. And then I was able to um, kind of transfer that knowledge onto the Arduino. And I just found Arduino was a lot more simple and it was very easy to prototype things. So if I wanted to build, you know, a circuit and I needed something to test, like for example, a screen or a display or how things were gonna work, then I could really easily prototype that on Arduino. So to answer your question, I did take a sort of a formal class on uh, microcontroller programming and then translated that into Arduino. And it was a very, uh, I wanna say, straightforward uh, transition. Um, but the approach that I would honestly advise you guys to take because this, per this person mentioned that it was extremely difficult to understand and learn on their own. But the approach that I would recommend is first of all, uh, watch tutorials on YouTube, you know, like understand what is going on, but also and even more important than just watching things is implement it on your own because uh, you will see problems that arise that you would never expect uh, to see. And that's just something that I had to go through over the years and, you know, like plug in a simple button and then you plug in a, a pull up resistor of a random value and like see what happens you know what happens to your signal plug in an oscilloscope and actually understand what is going on and it took like honestly like years and years of uh, trial like i want to say trial and error and experience before i was able to uh, be comfortable with uh, you know, electronics. And that's what I encourage you to do. Go out and buy those components, actually build it on a breadboard, plug in an oscilloscope, just plug in a meter if that's all you have and uh, start programming things, Try start trying things out you know, implement different uh, sequences and understand like what is what is going on, what are the drawbacks. I encourage you to see some of the issues because uh, you don't see this, but in the background, as I make my videos, I do uh, come in touch with, uh, you know, different uh, challenges and I learn from them because once you've, um, once you've overcome a certain problem that you have, you will never have that problem again and you will be aware that uh, it might be the case and you, you kind of grow as a developer uh, from that standpoint. And that applies to anything, uh, electronics, software, web development, you name it. So hopefully that answers uh, that question. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. I also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that I left for you with uh, extra content. Last but not least, leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos, questions about this topic or otherwise. Uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time.